Hi, I'm Chris from Wake Forest, North Carolina. I'm going to tell you how I replaced the old gas pack system on my house with a new Climate Master geothermal system. I was able to save several thousand dollars by doing it myself with a little help from Ingram's Water and Air Equipment. I bought a two ton Climate Master unit from Ingram's and installed it in my crawl space so all the equipment is inside out, out of the elements. And the first thing I had to do is get a 385 foot well drilled in my backyard to install loop piping in. I have shallow rock, so that was a better alternative than doing a trench. Here's the heavy duty drill bit they use for drilling through the rock. And they rolled out the loop piping. And the Loop piping has a factory installed U-bend at the end of it and they t taped a piece of rebar to give it some weight and protection as they uh, put it down into the well. And it's an open hole, they don't put any casing in the hole, it's just a hole in the rock basically. After they install the loop, they backfill the hole with a mixture of bentonite grout and sand. This is the grout pump. Drilling does make a pretty big mess. This is basically ground up granite rock and well cuttings. And here's where they're uh, pumping grout back into the hole. After they were done, I rented a trencher so I could dig a trench about three feet deep from my crawl space out to the well. I hand dug next to the well to make sure I didn't damage the pipe. This was a, bit, a good bit of work to get it trenched. Then I uh, dug it under the foundation and into the crawl space. Here's my old gas pack unit that I replaced. Supply and return duct work were coming out through the wall. So I removed all that. And then uh, I already had a, a header in my crawl space so I was able to cut out that section of the wall and give me a good access in my crawl space for uh, maintaining the unit and installing. Here's where the uh, Clamp Master unit was delivered with uh, on a pallet and then I was able to put it on a hand truck to bring in the crawl space. I mounted the unit on threaded rod that was attached to a super strut that I bought from Lowe's uh, for about $30. Also built a uh, return box to adapt from a 16 inch flex duct to the side of the unit. But you can buy this from Ingram's or have it made locally at a, a metal shop. And I uh, insulate it with a foam board. And I bought some of the uh, equipment from a local HVAC contractor at the, the round uh, transition there. Here I replaced my return ductwork with a 16 inch duct, attached it to the side of the unit with a box. This is where I attached to the existing supply box where all the uh, ductwork comes into the house. I got a Ingram's to supply what's called a duct takeoff to attach to the side of the unit. I installed a new disconnect switch in my crawl space and then ran a 10 gauge wire to the unit for power. And the brown line is thermostat and the other one coming out goes to the flow center. Here's the loop piping coming in. Goes to the QT flow center which is basically just a, a pump. There's the pump, and um, it just is a constant velocity pump that keeps water circulating through the system when it's on. And the piping goes over to the heat pump. And here's the uh, water connect kit that has uh, pressure and temperature ports on them for checking the temperature going in and out. And then the water loop goes back out. I installed a valve to bleed off 
air on that side of the uh, loop and then goes back out to the well. Since it's a non-pressurized system, you don't need a flush card or any special equipment to start the unit up. I also mounted the plumbing to threaded rod and super strut to give it support. You can open up the top of the flow center while it's running. It's always getting bubbles out of that side of the system and you can add any freezer water there if you need to. Here I added uh, uh, valves and hose fittings to the standard hose kit and here's the pressure and temperature port you can insert a thermometer. Water is coming out of the ground at about 60 degrees in February in North Carolina. Then you can check to see the temperature drop across the unit and check it against the table, see if it's uh, running correctly. Open up the blower section. Here's the back side of the coils and the condensate pan and the variable speed blower, all high quality equipment. It was a great job. I've got the other end opened up, show you where I made the electrical connections. Here's where the heat pump power supply goes in. And then the HWG pump is hot water generator. I haven't installed the plumbing for that yet, uh, but it also provides power to the uh, flow center and switches the pump on automatically. The brown wire is the thermostat runs around the front of the unit and connects to the front of the control board and those red and white dip switches you may need to adjust based on how you have the unit set up. It's got a CFM light there at the bottom that uh, blinks lets you know how much air the fan is blowing and also has some lights to tell what uh, the thermostat signals are sending to the unit. Is the two-stage compressor that can run at 65% most of the time and then just kicks on to second stage when it needs to. It's got your water coming in and going out. And the water basically um, loops around and circulates around the refrigerant coils Open up crawl space. to get heat, extract the heat. So here's the unit installed. Uh, basically doing it myself, I uh, probably saved about $5,000 with a little help from Ingrams. Um, it basically has been cost me about what it would cost to replace my system with a gas pack after taxes and doing it myself. And here's the uh, thermostat that's provided by Ingrams. If you want any more information about my installation, go to geothermalheatpumpdiy.com.